I tell these people out there what time it is? Behind enemy lines, an undercover report of a socially corrosive college course. In this video, I will discuss the doctrine of microaggressions, which includes micro-insults, micro-assaults, and micro-invalidations, as taught in a USA College, a state college, in 2016 that somebody, <coughs> I won't say who, took. The following words are the words of the student who took this course. The course description is misleading. There is nothing in the course description that would indicate that the students would be given a political indoctrination rather than the education that they paid for. There's the course description on your screen, by the way. The student continues, as you can see, it's supposed to be about the relationship between mental health and culture and about the way that various cultures handle mental health. But in reality, what it is, though unwittingly, is a look at the mental health of our own culture, or rather, a subsection of our own Western culture, that is, politically correct culture. In other words, this course is a look at the insanity of PC culture, rather than a look at the way that various cultures handle mental health. I was excited to learn about the ways that other cultures handle mental health issues. For example, I wanted to learn about tribal healers or shamans, but the only time that this course covered any such thing was in my own final presentation. There on your screen are a few slides from the student's final presentation. The student continues, I wanted to learn about how mental health was dealt with in Chinese medicine or Ayurvedic medicine, for example. But for the most part, this course was an agenda-driven, politically correct, anti-scientific, anti-academic, regressive left, socially corrosive dispensation of identity politics, reverse racism, intersectional feminism, third wave feminism, and so on. In this video, I am only going to cover this one small area of this student's experience in this course, that is the area of microaggressions, because otherwise this video would be many hours long, but I do plan to cover other areas of this course material in other videos. The material on microaggressions was presented as slides which were based on the paper Racial Microaggressions in Everyday Life, Implications for Clinical Practice by Sue et al., which was printed in American Psychologist in 2007. The reference is on your screen there. Now, this paper upon which these slides are based was based on an earlier paper or a few papers by Chester M. Pierce. This is the person who coined the term racial microaggressions. As I go through this course material, I encourage you to be ready to pause this video and to stop and to think and to offer your own criticisms point by point. Use your own reason, knowledge, logic, use humor. Um, talk about it in social media. Leave comments in the comment section of this video below. Make your own response videos. When you hear and see this, <coughs> That means I'm about to interject my own criticisms, using my own reason to counter this madness. And I encourage you to make your own criticisms before you hear mine, so be ready to pause when you hear and see this. I will now read you the course material, only paraphrasing slightly to avoid any copyright infringement. Microaggression. Modern racism. Death by a thousand paper cuts. Microaggressions are brief and commonplace daily verbal, behavioral, or environmental indignities. They can be intentional or unintentional. <coughs> Hold on. Notice that this is defined so that it can be unintentional. That makes it easier to accuse people of making microaggressions, and it makes it more difficult to discern false accusations from real ones. It's a Kafka trap. We'll get into that later. But that just means that it's unfalsifiable. In other words, you're guilty even if you're not guilty. They communicate hostile, derogatory, or negative racial slights and insults. They potentially have a harmful or unpleasant psychological impact on the target person or group. There are racial microaggressions, gender microaggressions, and sexual orientation microaggressions. Racial microaggression. Commonplace verbal or behavioral indignities, whether intentional or unintentional, which communicate hostile, derogatory, or negative racial slights and insults. Notice that racial microaggressions is defined so that it could be unintentional. They designed it so that this is unfalsifiable. In other words, you're guilty whether or not you're guilty. One cannot disprove an accusation of racial microaggressions, because if you deny that you made a racial microaggression, that just proves that it was an unintentional racial microaggression, but one is still guilty. Basically, it is defined so that one is considered to be guilty whether or not one is actually guilty, and that's known as a Kafka trap. Obviously, it's circular reasoning. It's illogical and incorrect. It's ignorant. Anyone with a somewhat logical mind, just a little bit of a logical mind and an average level of intelligence will see that. This is the product of an inferior intelligence, or 
intellectual dishonesty. Take your pick. Either way, this is an insult to the intelligence. Yet, this was printed in American Psychologist in 2007, and it's being taught to college students. It's like something from the film Idiocracy. Yes, some scientific research seems to suggest that everyone is racist on an unconscious level, but even if that were true, this would still be an attempt to magnify a microscopic thing into a macroscopic thing. Think of a magnifying glass. Sure, it makes things appear large through distortion. And that's what this is. Distortion. Examples of racial microaggressions. 1. A white woman clutches her purse when a black or Latino gets into an elevator with them. But wait, according to third wave feminism, all men are dangerous and evil. So here is one of the many places where we see the inherent contradictions of PC culture colliding. 2. An Asian American born and raised in the US is complimented with the phrase, your English is so good. So compliments are necessarily aggressive? Look, sure in some cases the phrase, your English is so good, can be a passive aggressive insult. But in some cases, it's not an insult at all. These things are defined in such a way so as to overgeneralize. For example, the phrase, your English is so good, is defined as an insult whether or not it's meant to be an insult. It's all black and white, no gray area, no nuance, no intelligence, really. Examples of gender microaggressions 1. Labeling an assertive female manager as a bitch while describing their male counterpart as a forceful leader. Mistaking a female physician wearing a stethoscope as a nurse. Examples of sexual orientation microaggressions. 1. Students using the term gay to describe a fellow student who is socially ostracized. 2. A lesbian client in therapy reluctantly discloses her sexual orientation to a straight therapist by stating that she was into women. The therapist indicates that she was not shocked by the disclosure because she once had a client who was into dogs. Types of racial microaggressions. Racial microinsult, often unconscious. More Kafka trapping bullshit. Behavioral slash verbal remarks or comments that convey rudeness, insensitivity, and demean a person's racial heritage or identity. Racial microassault, often conscious. Explicit racial derogations characterized primarily by a violent verbal or nonverbal attack meant to hurt the intended victim through name-calling, avoidant behavior, or purposeful discriminatory actions. Notice the concept creep here. Look up concept creep, because this is important. This is the incremental changing of the meanings of words so as to fulfill an agenda. So notice the concept creep here. Words can be violent. <laughs> this is a micro-invalidation against victims of actual violence. Seriously, this devalues actual violence. It's trying to put people who have had their feelings hurt on the same level as people who have been physically abused. That's bullshit. PC culture, in its eagerness to gain more and more ground, incrementalism, tramples over real victims of violence. Shame. Shame on these people. This is unethical. It's unethical to try to devalue actual violence and put it on the same level as, Oh, I disagree with that. <laughs> Racial micro-invalidation, often unconscious. More Kafka trapping bullshit here, and don't worry, we'll cover Kafka trapping at the end. Verbal comments or behaviors that exclude, negate, or nullify the psychological thoughts, feelings, or experiential reality of a person of color. Notice the racism in the defining of racial micro-invalidation. It is defined as something that happens only to a person of color. Notice also that the definition refers to a person of color's experiential reality. In other words, if a person of color perceives that a racial micro-invalidation has occurred, then it has occurred whether or not it has actually happened. Notice, this is designed so that you are guilty if you are accused. It doesn't matter if you are actually guilty in reality, but if it happened in the imagination, I mean, in the experiential reality of a person of color, then you are guilty. According to this indoctrination, the imagination of a person of color trumps reality. Hell, a person of color can lie. I mean, they could say that they have an experiential reality of a racial microinvalidation simply because they want to, and they are to be believed. So they can imagine that a racial microinvalidation has taken place, or they can lie and say that it has taken place when they know damn well it is not, and the accused is guilty by definition. Notice this increasing trend in PC culture where one is not innocent until proven guilty. No, one is innocent 
until one is accused. Examples of racial micro insults. 1. Ascription of intelligence. Assigning a degree of intelligence to a person of color based on their race. 2. Second class citizen. Treated as a lesser person or group. 3. Pathologizing cultural values slash communication styles. The notion that values and communication styles of people of color are abnormal. 4. Assumption of criminal status. Presumed to be a criminal, dangerous, or deviant based on race. Examples of racial microaggressions. Environmental microaggressions. Macro level. Racial assaults, insults, and invalidations which are manifested on systematic and environmental levels. According to Sue et al. 2007, when white people stammer and falter their words, have trembling voices, etc., when directly engaged in discussion about race, it is a racial... <laughs> It is a racial microaggression. <clears throat> so now microaggression includes involuntary things. If you are nervous speaking in public, or if you are upset in the heat of a debate, you are guilty of thought crime, I mean, of racial microaggressions. If you have a speech impediment, a disability, you are guilty of a racial microaggression? <laughs> Fuck you! Shame on you, you ableist. Fuck you, PC culture. Notice that they are defining these things in an invalid, dishonest, mean-spirited, bitter, combative, power-hungry way. They are defining these things so that they can declare anyone guilty. This is witch hunt stuff, folks. This is witch hunt tactics. This is the PC Inquisition. Remember that in the witch hunts and in the Spanish Inquisition, you were guilty if you were accused. And that is accused by a dishonest, agenda-driven, biased, malicious system like that of PC culture. Examples of racial micro-invalidation. 1. Alien in own land. Belief that visible racial slash ethnic minority citizens are foreigners. 2. Color blindness. Denial that a white person sees color or race. Note that according to this example, the denial that a white person does not see color or race, by which it seems they actually mean a white person who does not have a racial prejudice, is a racial micro-invalidation. <laughs> Let's be clear about this. It's not saying that the denial of a prejudice white person's prejudice is a bad thing. It's saying that denying that a white person is prejudiced, whether or not they are, is a bad thing. Wrap your mind around this. Let that sink in. Take all the time you need. If you do not see that this is pure demagoguery, well, you're not very bright, are you? <laughs> They are training college students to believe things that cannot possibly be true. This is indoctrination into faith and dogma. Belief in things that cannot be true. It's wrong to say that a white person is not racist. That is an offensive thing. <laughs> Fucking idiots. I mean, this is the product of inferior minds. Oh, does that offend you? Good. They are defining all white people as prejudiced. That is racist. <laughs> it's actually really funny how stupid these people are. Notice that in some of the aspects of this PC culture bullshit, there is this tenacious holding on to racial prejudice. If you allow for the possibility for it to be non-existent in the future, then you're guilty. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's pretty boldface. If you're not stupid, it's just obvious. They want to hold on to their racial prejudice victim status, whether or not they actually have it. I'm not denying that racial prejudice exists, and I'm not denying that it's bad. Of course, it's horrible. However, in PC culture, which, by the way, is usually upper or middle class white people, there is this tenacious refusal to let go of racial prejudice where it no longer exists. Three, myth of meritocracy. Statements which assert that race plays a minor role in life success. This example is also a Kafka trap. It assumes that race plays a major role in life success in any given situation, now or in the future. It denies the possibility that in some places, sometimes, in some situations, race is not a major factor in success. Well, sorry, but that's not always a major factor in all times and in all places. But they deny this reality they deny that it's even possible in the future. You see, they're trying to define reality. This is Orwellian shit right here. Four, denial of individual racism. Denial of personal racism or one's role in its perpetuation. <clears throat> 
And this too is another Kafka trap. It denies that some individuals are not racist. Note also that they forgot to define it as something that only white people do. Oops, too late now. Can't take that back. By their definition, everyone is racist. Everyone. Every person of every color is racist, not just whites. Note also that a person is racist if they admit it or if they deny it, or whether or not they are racist. That is, by definition, incorrect and cannot be true by the laws of logic. But then again, according to this course, logic would be a weird, that is Western educated, industrialized, rich democracy, patriarchal tool of oppression. It is oppressive to women and non-whites because apparently they are not logical according to this course. No shit. I mean, I'm telling you, this course does teach logic <laughs> is a Western white male colonialist tool of oppression. I mean, Look, this is the student's test answer. He was doing this completely sarcastically, and he got a good grade for this answer right here. <laughs> this stuff is so ridiculous, it's indistinguishable from satire of it. Gender Microaggression Gender Microaggression Subtypes 1. Sexual Objectification 2. Second Class Citizenship 3. Assumptions of Inferiority 4. Assumptions of Traditional Gender Roles 5. Use of sexist language. 6. Environmental microaggression. Unfortunately for the gender microaggression and subtype section here, there was no fleshing this out. There was no examples or anything like that. Um, I don't know about you folks, but I didn't really find any serious objections, so I'm going to move on. Sexual orientation microaggression subtypes. 1. Use of heterosexist terminology. 2. Endorsement of heteronormative culture slash behaviors. 3. Assumption of universal LBGT experience. 4. Exoticization. 5. Discomfort slash disapproval of LGBT experience. Whoa, discomfort. It seems reasonable to assume that they are referring to discomfort from exposure to homosexual acts. In other words, seeing, say, two men kiss or two women grope each other or something like that. Well, fuck you! People are often uncomfortable with seeing affection or sex of any kind. I've been told by at least two gay people that they do not like seeing heterosexuals kissing and are disgusted by straight porn. So what? Who cares? If they're uncomfortable with heterosex, whatever. They are in no way committing an aggression, micro or otherwise. So don't be so fucking stupid. And don't be so damn inconsiderate of other people. 6. Denial of the reality of heterosexism. 7. Assumption of sexual pathology slash abnormality. 8. Threatening behaviors. So that's the end of the course material on microaggressions. Let's take a quick look at Kafka trapping, this term that I've used a few times in this video. The term comes from Franz Kafka's novel The Trial, in which the main character, Joseph K, is considered to be guilty simply because he is accused by an authority. Sounds familiar, huh? In this novel, Joseph K is accused of crimes in such a way so as to make establishing his innocence impossible. In other words, these accusations are unfalsifiable, which, by the way, of course is very much like the definitions of racial microaggressions and so on. They are unfalsifiable. They are designed so that the person who is accused is guilty by definition, just like Joseph K in this Franz Kafka novel, The Trial. In this novel, Joseph K is considered to be guilty simply because he is accused by a totalitarian authority, which Kafka meant at the time to be a critique of the Soviet Union. But of course, this is totally applicable to today's regressive left establishment in both colleges and politics in the West. Now, the term Kafka trapping itself was coined by Eric S. Raymond in his piece Kafka Trapping, and I will leave you with a quote from this that is very elucidating for this whole thing. The Kafka Trapper's objective is to hook into chronic self-doubt in the subject and inflate it in much the same way that an emotional abuser convinces a victim that the abuse is deserved. In fact, the mechanism is identical. Thus, Kafka Trapping tends to work best on weak and emotionally vulnerable personalities and poorly on personalities with a strong internalized ethos. Then the students watch this short comedic film called What Kind of Asian Are You? in which the stereotypical oblivious white guy tries to have a nice conversation, but of course it comes across as very offensive though clueless. It's funny, but unrealistic, because it's comedy. It's not meant to be instructive, yet the class was asked to analyze this video as if it were appropriate to do so in a college class. But it's not. This video is grade school level stuff. 
but the students were asked to spot the microaggressions that this walking stereotype makes. I find this stereotypical white guy to be really funny, however you really should fairly ask yourself what if this was a stereotype of anything other than a white guy. It should go without saying that this is hypocritical, I mean, it's politically correct, but it's hypocritical. I mean, notice that it is politically correct to make fun of uh, white guy stereotypes, however, any other stereotype, oh, that's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it is. Oh, goodness. There is a link in the description. After that, the students watched the commercial, or a trailer, for the film Misrepresentation, for which there is a link in the description to this video. The trailer suggests that the film will address the issues of sexism and objectification of women in Western culture, but the trailer provides no information, and so it's really rather pointless, except as a commercial. Have it, folks. Keep in mind that this was just one day in this college course, and we're going to go over other days in other videos, and this was just one college course in many in the Western world. Keep in mind that this was not gender studies. This was an advanced psychology elective in a state college. After paying record high tuition rates, this is what the students are getting for their money. An indoctrination. A political indoctrination, not an education. More importantly, keep in mind that this sort of regressive left, politically correct indoctrination is being used to condition college kids all over the Western world. I encourage you to watch Dave Cullen's YouTube series, Letters from Inside the Belly of the Beast, and Social Justice Horror Stories. I also encourage you to look up Christina Hoff Summers, Jonathan Haidt, Peter Boghossian, Gad Said, and others, and see what they have to say about this ruining of college education in the Western world with this regressive left, politically correct degradation. Listen, people, we can't stand for this, and we can't take this lying down either. No, listen, we have to expose and expel these people for what they are. Truth and real justice, these things are on our side. Fight back. We will win. Thank you for watching this video, folks. Please subscribe to this channel, and whether or not you've already subscribed, you do have to click on this little bell icon in order to get notifications for future videos because YouTube is fucking stupid. Also, if you've been unsubscribed from my channel, I am sorry. We do not know why, but YouTube has been doing this to YouTube channels that are controversial, so you may want to resubscribe. Also, consider joining Minds.com. Minds.com, I'm not affiliated with them whatsoever, but they are anti-censorship. It's like Facebook, and it's like YouTube without the bullshit of either one of those. So Minds.com may be the future to replace both of these bullshit motherfucking websites that we all hate, but we all have to deal with because we don't have an alternative. Well, Minds.com, that's the alternative. See you next time, folks.